But there's that thing though, when your identity shifts, where I knew, I always knew that I wanted to be a mother. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a child. I didn't know, and I knew I wanted to be his wife and I was really great at being a wife and I'm really great at being a mother, but I hadn't learned how to balance being a wife and a mother. I didn't really have examples of what that looked like. And more often than not, I would back burner him to Noah. Um, mm -hmm. I, think, I don't think I did my part as a wife in making sure that I was also holding up my end of the bargain where I think at times he was doing a better job than I was of that. Like fatherhood for him is a different thing than motherhood is. So I have often felt like I'm, I'm splitting. Like I'm, I know that I love them both with every fiber of my being, but, oh, he needs me more right now. And I'll, and I'll get to my husband afterwards. And then it'll be like, oh, I'll get, I just have to finish this thing. And you know what I mean? Like that thing where we used to take care of each other, we were like, you're good. Like everybody's alive. You good? You good? As opposed to going, uh, not so good today. And, and then taking the time to sit in that. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Everything's Okay, a mental health podcast brought to you by the one and only Crazy Ant Media. Today is going to be a very special conversation because like life itself, a lot of these things do not come with handbooks. And this one is going to be very fun because we have coming to this, this show for the first time, but they are return guests to Crazy Ant Media because they, we had them on ITCAP podcast. We've got Ryan Krauss and Ella Thomas on to talk about parenting, all the pros, all the cons and everything in between. Um, I'm super excited for this conversation because right now, I am engaged, so I am thinking about the broader things in life, so trying to just get prepared, and so the whole time, I'm just going to be taking notes, because I feel like you guys are just like epic parents. I remember the first time we were talking to you, um, just talking about the love you have for your child, and just everything that y'all have been through, being entertainers in the entertainment industry, and being able to balance a lot of things, or at least as best as you can, because I know it can be difficult, but thank you so much for taking time out of your evening and just coming to get a little mental health crazy with us. <laughs> you. Hey, guys. Oh, my gosh. We, like Logan said, we are so excited that we had such an amazing time talking to you guys the last time, but we will avoid any talk with popsicles today, and we're going to be... Well, actually, <laughs> right. actually, we're so neck deep in popsicles these days that it's probably never been more appropriate. Yeah, it's more drumsticks nowadays. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> if you guys want to know what we're talking about, go back and listen to that other interview. Uh, I promise you it's well worth it. Um, so, yeah, like Logan said, you guys are... you guys you know, you're, you're parenting, you're going through in, in, a, in an industry that's not always easy to be parents in. And, uh, as everybody knows, it's not easy being a parent to begin with and no matter what your job field is. And I think a lot of times when people like Logan and my daughter, who at some point are going to start a family, um, uh, together, that's, you know, it, it's, you got to be prepared for it, right? Because I feel like a lot of times go in in the excitement of having the baby and, and saying we're going to start a family and everything and you're not really – then it happens and you're like, oh, shit. This is this and this and this and this. What were we thinking kind of a thing, right? So I think a lot of aspects that I want to kind of dive into, postpartum depression and anxiety – uh, shifts in self-esteem and an identity, the relationship strain. It puts a lot of strain on the relationship, both for the man and the woman in all different types of areas. Financial, you, a lot of people, you times you, we retreat from our social circles because it becomes all about at home with the kids. Um, all those different kind of areas that I feel like start to mess with you, start to mess with the mental stability and like, is did we make the right decision? Are we doing the right thing kind of thing? So let's just kind of take it right off the top. Was it a decision that you guys had made together to start a family? Was it a, uh, uh-oh, a baby's coming, <laughs> you know? Uh, was no, it, yeah. No. Ours, like, so I have wonky plumbing. 
to any of your female listeners out there, ladies, get your AMH check, anti-malarian hormone. This is something that starts to happen at 30. So by the time women are thinking of freezing their eggs or, you know, getting to that place where they're in a relationship where they want to have a child, your body's already doing something else. And it's happening earlier than a lot of women suspect. So it has to be part of just your well woman checkup every year past 30, Mm. because this can start happening in your late twenties. So yes, my plumbing was a little wonky and we had to actually go through IVF. So ours was literally planned down to the, you know, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well put. Well, (laughs) so with that, with, okay. So with knowing Right. That okay, we're going to do this. We're going to commit because, uh, you, you know, that process in itself is a commitment to try to get that done and get pregnant and, and, and have through because so many times there are difficulties with that. Um, but knowing that going in, having the planning, what was it like? Was it a shock factor after the baby arrived? Was it like even though you were prepared for it? Talk about, OK, baby's here. W- what now? <laughs> we, we literally walked in the door with him put him on the couch, sat down, and then we looked at each other and we're like, what do we do? And we're, like, we're, keep, we're, we're, like, we're like, keep him alive. Yeah, and that's the what the only nurse... goal was, let's keep him alive. That's all we had. That and a little chart to keep exactly. track of how much he was peeing and going to the bathroom. Yeah, that's... that's what they send you home with. They send you home with a chart and a squirt bottle yep. and say, there you go. Keep him alive. <laughs> that luck. was it. That was it. We were like, what? That's it? No <laughs> big secret to help me out here. She's like, nope. Keep them alive. It's <laughs> pretty crazy. It's pretty. It's pretty fascinating when you come home from being just two people in a house to all of a sudden another person in your space that you literally have to keep alive. And every second now, every time the baby makes a sound, you're worried. What sound is that? Is that good? Is Life that bad? becomes like a Final Destination movie. Mm-hmm. You are seeing what could happen. I I basically have the reflexes of a jungle cat at this point because you are catching things. Things are falling. He's going there. He's going there. I didn't know I could be as athletic as I was. <laughs> I mean, I got skills, people. Yeah. But it is that like that's all you think about is what could happen. What could happen? Everything is a death trap. Yeah. And that is without having, I was, I was really fortunate that I wasn't the ones that I didn't have postpartum anxiety or depression. Um, I think that also probably is because my hormone levels where they were at, which was part of the issue of getting pregnant, never fluctuated in that manner to really be affected that way. But even without that, there is the, especially I think with women, there's this kind of biological imperative you, you're functioning on no sleep. If you're gone for more than four, like 30 minutes out the house, you feel like you have to get home. You got to get the baby fed. Your your body actually stops responding the way that you used to think it would because your impulses are different. And that was an interesting adjustment. I'm like, oh, oh, you you don't belong. Oh, you you're just you're just food. I am just food right now. Yeah. For the next year. Yeah. And we did not have a night nurse, so those first months of feeding where you're up every couple hours to feed the baby you literally your brain is mashed potatoes you don't know what's happening what you're so exhausted that you're irrational so that is a very tough period that section where every couple hours you have to get up and right as you get you pick you pick him up he eats you change the diaper he eats again but because he ate he pooped but now he ate so he's gonna spit up if you lay him down to change the diaper so you, gotta pat him the, so you gotta pat him and then you gotta put him on an incline change the diaper and just as you got him to sleep the alarm goes it's time to do it all again yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh my god L- L- logan is like holy <laughs> shit wait a minute yeah. like, <laughs> night, that doesn't last it's like the feedings get longer the stretches get longer you shower again that's right it's a good two month run where you're deep in the trenches and you're like <laughs> what is going on you know, and i will say that um I was also very fortunate that I have a husband that was in it. Like mm. the first, the, even in the hospital, he handled the first couple of diaper changes. Like, but he was a better swaddler than I was. By the time we got home, it was a system. It went up. He went and got. He changed him. He brought him to me. We fed. I handed him back. He went. Like we were a machine. But I don't know 
how women do it. So, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for them because I had someone that was doing more than half. Right. Right. Well, you know, you said that with the, with the depression and the anxiety, while not clinically diagnosed anxiety, right? The anxiousness though, like you said, uh, it's, oh, you, you, you got to hear them. You, you, everything is focused on, did you hear that? Did you not hear that kind of thing? I know. Is that, he breathing? Yeah. Is he breathing? No, that's, well, that's what I was just going to say. That's, sure yes, that's what I was going to say. Emily was very, oh, she colicky and she cried a lot. So, so anytime I didn't hear her crying, I was in panic mode. Oh my God, did she stop breathing? And I would run in there thinking that something was major. She's just sleeping. It's she's, we've yeah. wanted her to stop crying all this time. Now she stopped crying and now I'm panicking that she's not breathing. Um, you're already sleep deprived, but now you're staying mm -hmm. awake to make sure that you're hearing her breathe. And it's like, oh my gosh. Right. And you're right. So that, that cycle of, you know, that's very it's stressful, a stressful situation. You're kind of dealing all this thing. Like you said, you 30, 30 minutes away, you want to go back home, you want to check on everything. And it's hard enough to deal with stress when you're completely healthy and you're rested and you're getting, but when you're sleep deprived and, you, and you're nutrition deprived, dealing with stress is Google tough. reading about crib deaths and what can happen. You're yes. Like, oh, everything. Yes. Google, it, yes. Google is the devil. I said, it. <laughs> love Google, hate Google, got my medical degree from Dr. Google University, but Google's the devil. Oh. Don't go on there. You to ask the worst thing that you can imagine will be absolutely, you know, Stop verified by results. Google. Yes. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. Logan, it's time weigh in, buddy. <laughs> well, are you scared now? Are you? <laughs> oh yeah. But I mean, definitely the jitters have always been there for the anticipation. I feel like uh, it's going to be a, uh, a journey in itself. That is for sure. And I'm curious too, because people always say, and you see all of these things on television and movies and different things like that. When do you feel comfortable enough to like actually go out and have a date night? Because your two connectability. What, what was that two... word? What, what, what's that word you were saying? <laughs> a date night. Date night. Yeah, I don't know like, what you're talking about. <laughs> you well, pay for you someone to come watch your kid. Right. <laughs> yeah. Why are you going to spend more money? Just it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Well, what, when do you feel comfortable enough to leave your child with someone else after birth? That, that I mean, that's the big one for we me. We didn't feel comfortable. <laughs> As when he was a baby at all. Even when my our parents were here and relatives, we didn't feel. Remember, I did IVF. This is an expensive baby. Right. <laughs> Not just handing them off to anybody. Yeah, yeah. So we were really squirrely about that. But I think after a couple months after, you know, it depends on the breastfeeding too, the feeding schedule. Okay. So, it was a while. It was a while, yeah. Was For us, it took a little while. Yeah. I mean, I would go and have like lunch with friends. I'd had no problem these two rolled solo all the time right so that part wasn't it i think it would have been easier for us if we had family that lived closer mm -hmm. but because everybody um that we have that's immediate family lives on the east coast w the vetting process is a little different and we did find someone who we love who has known noah since he's like a year old but even then it was like we were down the street at the grove the list of emergency contacts on the fridge allergies on the fridge me texting her three times an hour everything okay how's it going her yeah. texting me pictures he's alive i'm like okay yeah yeah so even when you're not there you're there Right. I, I, that that's kind of like the process. You can't you can't escape that, especially early on. Uh, same way. Same thing. It was like, no, 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 no. If we can't if we, we're right here. And sometimes even if we would find ourselves going some we would leave early. We wouldn't finish the movie. We'd eat dinner quick mm -hmm. and go home. We had, you know, kind of a thing. It was like, we let's just go wedding. back. Home. We went to Anselm's wedding. We did yeah, actually go, yeah, we, that was, she came to the house yeah. and we went to, we went to a wedding and we were the first people to leave, but we <laughs> went, we threw back a couple cocktails and, you know, we were like, all right, that was fun. You ready? Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> so you brought up the financial aspect of it, right? Because I, I feel like that is an issue that causes a lot of strain on a lot of relationships mm -hmm. and a lot of families when they bring a child into the world. One, I don't think we do enough to educate people on how expensive it is to have a child, let alone mm -hmm. multiple children in a family, right? And then if you are like for me, I was I was doing the the entertainment gig prior to the baby coming and as we all know now with the strikes, but it's not always strike induced. 
it's not a steady income all the time. It, you, you have no. to plan for it. You have to be ready for it. And uh-oh, now we have a baby. I, I need a steady paycheck now. What's going to happen now kind of a thing. And, and we had discussed, okay, you're going to stay home. You, you're going to be a mom. So I've got to provide now. I've got to like make infinitely more because it's only mm-hmm. going to be me. And it's going to be, this is how it's going to be to have those type discussions. And I was very fortunate that I was in a position to where I still got to play. I went into news and, and production and still got to play and make that steady paycheck. And I was also done every day. I, I worked while they slept and I was home every morning and home all day. So I was an all in dad too. I could come and go whenever I needed to. I never missed an event. I never missed mm-hmm. anything happening. I was there to be able to help. We were very fortunate in that. But there are a lot of people that are not. They're that they are mm-hmm. required to work. They can't be home. And then there you find yourselves basically working to pay for the daycare or to pay for yeah. the sitter or to cause you, because that's it's so expensive nowadays yeah. for those type things. Talk about how it was a little bit for you guys in the industry. And as yeah. you said, it was already an expensive process to get pregnant and have the baby. Now you've got that expense of the baby and yeah. you've got those gaps where maybe you're not always income the you, you, what are we we're now we're trying to stretch things out talk about that was that a little bit of a difficult process for y'all well, for us we were very fortunate in the beginning our schedules did not cross over very much at all mm-hmm. so we were able to one of us was always able to be around noah so that worked out greatly in our favor because as you say child care is very expensive yeah it's probably the most expensive the diapers the formula that's expensive but it's nowhere near the burden of health Oh yeah, help! Help is pretty much. I think. I think people think when you're when they say, "Oh, having a baby's expensive." Honestly, it's not the that the child itself is, but not till they're like two or three and you start to need things, schools, you know, diapers yeah. and schools, and and you need help and you need to go to work. That's when and you want a certain education level for your child and you want the best daycare and so those things become expensive. But initially, they're just. You know, they're a backpack. They're going where you're going. Yeah, um, yeah. But it, but it was, we we also knew what we were doing. So we had budgeted. Um, I was, I researched, we had researched about the things that were available to us in California. We were able to, I was able to go on disability mater, uh, for maternity leave. And then California also offers fathers paternity, like family leave. Right. After, that they can take within the year. So, and then I rolled into family leave. So I budgeted within that, and I actually ended up book, like I booked something within like the first couple of months up in Vancouver. Um, I booked Supergirl, and they were great. They were like, we have a hotel, production took care of everything. They're like, we have a hotel, we have a crib, we're sending car service with car seat, everything. I had done all the work, I got his birth certificate, everything. But as of a few years ago, children need a passport yes they can come but only but here's the thing you can drive across the border with a birth certificate land or sea you or you can go by land or sea but just not by plane mm. so the three of us get on a get to the airport delta i've packed you know my pump and everything and we're at the airport and they're telling me that noah that noah can't travel with you us you can't take your baby oh wow i will tell you that the performance I gave in the middle <laughs> of Delta Terminal, I was a sobbing wreck on the floor. I've never, I don't think I've melted down that way in in my adult life. Yeah. But, and production was calling, they're like, is she getting on the plane? I'm like, I can't go, I can't go. And Ryan, Ryan's like, I got this. He switched over suitcases and he went home with the baby and I went up to Vancouver and sobbed the entire way. I sobbed on set. I sobbed in my fittings. I was there with my pump, like just storing milk. I was, I made no money because I was flying home every three days right. to drop it off. And Ryan finally sat me down. He's like, hey, nothing's wrong with the kid. He's just with his father. Calm down. I'm like, oh, okay. But what I realized is that I thought, oh, I'm so ready to go back and get in it and make money and be and doing the thing. And I wasn't. Mm. And I did not work, like take another job out of town for probably a year. Like I didn't realize that I was kind that I had 
a block up against it. But he didn't have the same problem. He booked a job in Bahamas. He was like, see ya. <laughs> he went to Bahamas, shot like a week long commercial, flew my best friend out to stay with me and had a great time. But it was a different thing. There were no tears. There was no flying home every three days to see us. It was right. like, he's like, oh, all right, got this. So talk about that, though. <laughs> talk about that because that's an interesting dynamic, too, because I want to kind of jump into this and I want to get really real with it. And I hope you guys are feel comfortable enough to kind of open up and share a little bit. But because the separation anxiety is real, right? A lot mm. of people go through that. You think you're ready and you go out and then you realize I wasn't even close to being ready. I miss my kid. I want to go home. You start to get resentful for the person that is home. Oh, well, you're fine. You're there. You're you're not missing. Right. And then was there, aside from the resentment of maybe, well, you're there and I'm not, and I'm crying like a baby, and I miss, I miss Noah, I want to come home. Was there a resentment when he didn't have those issues? No, I'm going, I'm fine. Hey, enjoy the time. I'm going to go do this. a different too when you're breastfeeding. I oh, without that. doubt. Without <laughs> doubt. Come out of me that I was like, I was able to have a cerveza down there. That's a little more. But I did, I really missed them. But I knew he was in good hands. So for me, right. I think he that slept, was, he slept peacefully. Yeah, yeah. I finally got to sleep. I was like, I'm uh, sleeping in. Whoa. Yeah. It was, great. Yeah. So it was kind of nice. But we knew we had to make money. So we also, that was there too. That was like such a gift that you can be like, okay, I know this is a short period of time. I'll be right back. And one of us had been with Noah pretty much in the first couple of years. One of us was together with him besides. Yeah, we've counted. We probably he's probably only been away from both of us eight days max. Wow, wow, that's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah, yeah. and like, kudos there's to always, you. There's always one parent that's around, and that's we've kind of set up the schedule that way. But also at times he's working with us, so right. That, that so it's that's great. kind of yeah. been lovely. That was actually the gift of pandemic because they didn't want to cast families that weren't real families. They wanted to take a pod. So they knew that everybody was healthy. Right, right. So, that's how, so that came out of that whole scenario. Mm. But the, believe it or not, I think what happens to the parent that's home, because Ryan's had that a couple of times and I've had it a couple of times where you think that the person that's off working is getting time off. Mm. For where, where the person at home is like, because it isn't full on all day, especially if they're not in school. It's an all day thing and you get how many are exhausted. And the idea is that the person's like off on set and kind of easy and everything. And the truth is that both are equally exhausting for sure, because that is a free for all. You're still at the mercy of production. And, you know, the scheduling is usually like, bam, bam, you're flying and you're tired. And so one person comes home and they're like, Ooh, I just want to take a break. And the other person's like, Here's the kid. I'm going to go take a break. Yeah. yeah. And I think that dynamic sometimes it creates friction. Mm -hmm. Because everybody feels like they just did their part and everybody just wants a, like a break. And I, and I think in any industry, I don't care if the father or the mother works a nine to five and there's a homemaker, the workload is equal. Like in terms of there are a million little things that happen throughout the day that you do by rote, like it, you're not accounting for it, but it does take up time and it takes up your mental capacity. And each person comes and we've, we've done it great at times and we've been not so kind and gracious with each other at times when we've come home. Um, we, you know, we've had times where we had to really try hard to reconnect because we've given this advice to so many couples, so many couples. It's like the number one thing we say, don't forget each other. Put yourself first. Yes. And we started, but we started putting the child first. And then you're supposed to take care of yourself because you got to do self-care and you want to keep your career going. That means that our relationship was now dropping down into third place. So mm -hmm. talk about that. Let's dive deep into that because I feel like the lack of intimacy, the lack mm -hmm. of falling in the in the hierarchy of importance, you know, I, I feel mm -hmm. like nobody goes into it. That's not intentional. It's just something that happens and it's something it's that's a part of the day. process, but it's yeah. still difficult, 
right? Finding that time to be intimate, finding that time to just have a conversation and sit down and talk about how each other's days were. Let, let's not even talk about the challenges of getting re-intimate, re-acclimating into a sexual relationship or anything, just to have a conversation that's not being interrupted by the, by the child, right? Talk or about that. That's not about the child. Yeah. Know? Yes. Like, yeah. We would, we would literally laugh sometimes. We're like, well, do we have, do, like, do we have anything yeah. to talk about? Mm -hmm. Because it just, and truth is that we, we really enjoy our kid. We mm -hmm. kind of, you know, hit the jack part. He's funny. He's sweet. He's our plus one. And so it's never this thing like, Ooh, thank God we're away from the ball and chain. We're right. like, Oh, he would really like to try that. Like, but on that note, he is also the main focus. That yeah. That does put us back. Because even when we, like, after putting him to sleep, which is parents' favorite moment, which is <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, what just happened to our day? How are you? Are you eating? No, I'm going right to bed or whatever. <laughs> you need to just, Like, literally the thought. idea, like, there have been times, I mean, you want to get real, real well, where I'm like, hey, and he's like, oh, babe. You're beautiful, but I just no. <laughs> yes, I just. He's like, can we? And and then I'm almost like, yeah. Thank God, let's go cuddle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a but great point, just, though. That is a very valid point because I went through that as well. We even you go so far as to plan. We are going to do this tonight. We are yes. gonna. Ha and then when the yes. time comes, you're just like. like oh, I am so fucking tired. I just want to go to sleep. I know. I know. We we got the candles out. We got all this romantic shit. We've got it all planned. But you know what? If we go do that, I'm falling asleep. I'm just not having it. It's not gonna happen. And that does get difficult, right? Because then you, you the 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 you start to feel guilty. Am I am I doing enough? Are we focusing on each other enough? Are we kind of? And that becomes like you know trying to balance that is a difficult thing. And for anybody who's being honest about about it it's still as as important as it was prior to the kid right a, 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 an intimate relationship a sexual relationship in a marriage is important and it doesn't lose the importance just because the child comes but the difficulty of maintaining that and and making time for that even when you have the best of intent is like sometimes hard and yeah, so it's back it's like one of the first things to get back burger yes yeah yeah, like it really is. It's so easy to be like, well, well, what do you got tomorrow at like 12, 12 30 after the gym for shot for pickup? Let's do it. Like, I'll meet you in the bathroom. Like, yeah. You're on a schedule with a kid. You always have a schedule. It's always a schedule. That's right. There's no more. There's no more just random, uh, you know, spur Free of the cool. moment. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Especially as they get older. You try one of those spur of the moments as they get older and they're walking in. Oh, oh shit. Whoops. Uh oh, hi. You know, so yeah, it gets, I feel like a lot of people think it gets easier when they get older. It There's a little thing phase there where it gets even more difficult when they're getting older, right? They're like, it's like, you guys, you can go play date. Go ahead. Go do your thing. <laughs> That's like, right. Yeah, but, and the thing about, and it gets hard for women because your body is a little different mm. and things are different and the hormonal shifts, you're, you are a completely different human being um, in terms of just what your, like it's everything. And, you know, women will talk to each other about it. Like, you know, oh, so that happened, that happens to you too. Okay. Whereas guys are still hot and cute and doing their thing. The, the little, the mouse. Yeah. There. Nope. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Hey guys, here's plus one. <laughs> he just lost his two this show. Hey buddy. Oh, <laughs> oh, congrats. How you doing? Good. Good? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're talking about being a mommy and a daddy. But I heard you were talking about me. We were. Because yeah. <laughs> we love you. Yeah. Our low plus one. All right. Skid out. Adios, amigo. See you in a little bit. No. Go. <laughs> <laughs> by the way by asking to stay he'd have no interest yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like no i'm good yeah. that's okay. fantastic though that i i love i heard you talking about me how's everything going <laughs> yeah. right exactly okay oh. he added a dinosaur to the conversation First, fantastic sure. we we, yeah we props. yeah <laughs> Prop uh, we have no less than 332 dinosaurs in this house. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you can name them all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's real. <laughs>
<laughs> That's so great. I love that. Yeah, um, so for, for the relationship and getting like intimate again, you like, that is the thing that that's the stuff that no one prepares you for. Right. Mm -hmm. That things shift. Having a baby in your body for nine months pushes things around in there and down there. So you're like, oh, it feels a little different. And then you feel awkward. And then you're like, oh, God, what is that on my, is that what my stomach looks like from this angle? Like you just, even when you're back in shape, you're just like, everything has kind of shifted it's different mm -hmm. it's rediscovering each other it's relearning each other right which isn't an always an easy thing to do like yeah like not even close to easy because you're just like hey <laughs> well and, and let's be honest yeah. about it right men are men it's like that ain't working for no you anymore but that used to be the thing that that was like yeah. my go-to what do you mean it doesn't work anymore kind of a thing right that's an yeah, ego it plays like, on the ego like, Okay. Now, okay. Uh, you, you know what? It's good. Just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But I, there's also the thing that you guys had touched on is the identity crisis. Right. Mm. Like, you know, this human still gives me butterflies when he comes up. The, like I hear him coming. Like that's like, that's my person. Like God gave me my hall pass. Like I'm good. Like that, that this I got to be with the hall pass. He's here. This is it. <laughs> um, but there's that thing though when your identity shifts, where I knew I always knew that I wanted to be a mother. You mm know, -hmm. I wanted to be a child. I didn't know, and I knew I wanted to be his wife, and I was really great at being a wife, and I'm really great at being a mother. But I'm hadn't learned how to balance being a wife and a mother. I didn't really have examples of what that looked like. And more often than not, I would back burner him to Noah. Um, mm -hmm. I, think, I don't think I did my part as a wife in making sure that I was also holding up my end of the bargain, where I think at times he was doing a better job than I was of that. Like fatherhood for him is a different thing than motherhood is. So I have often felt like I'm, I'm splitting. Like I'm, I know that I love them both with every fiber of my being, but, Oh, he needs me more right now. And I'll, and I'll get to my husband afterwards. And then it'll be like, Oh, I'll get, I just have to finish this thing. And you know what I mean? Like that thing where we used to take care of each other, we were like, you're good. Like everybody's alive. You good. You good. As opposed to going, uh, not so good today. And, and then taking the time to sit in that. Like, so we started trying to schedule town hall meetings. We call them our little town halls to just check in and not gloss over it because the glossing over is what gets you in trouble. The, mm -hmm. well, it's not life or death or it's not this and that. And then it starts building and building and building. And then you start bickering and then the, start letting off steam and, you know, being teach, treating each other like scratching posts. And that, you know, ties into that, forgetting that it was the relationship and the love of that relationship in that relationship that wanted, that made you want to bring this life in so that they could be part of that. You know what? And I know Logan, you're, 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 you're chomping to, to chime in there, but I just want to say it takes a lot of courage to, to admit what you just admitted to say, I wasn't okay. And you're not always going to be okay. And it's okay to feel like you're failing. Don't, don't like have to hide that or repress that. It's say that. I feel like I'm failing you. I feel like I'm letting you down. Let's talk about this kind of a thing. It's okay to do that because you're right. I feel like when we start to back burner that and say, it's not a big deal. So we'll just ignore it right now. We'll get to it later kind of thing. I did that. I failed at that. That's why my I, I take huge part in the fact that my marriage failed in the sense that it wasn't about did we love each other or not love each other. It, it's We had a tendency to do just that. That's not a world-ending thing. Let's just get to that later. Let's focus on this. And it did start to. It did start Sorry. to. Oh, go to it. <laughs> no, no. It's all no, good. No, I'm running away. Right. I'm like. Because this is this is this is parenthood. Yeah, where, yeah, no. And you're but, telling me something. I'm listening to you, and it's really important. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. He's screaming. No, at no, you're you're totally fine. 
no, yeah. no, you're to- but you, I'm glad you brought that up because it's a prime example of the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. Now we were, we, and remain to this day, very close and phenomenal parents. There wasn't a single thing where one of us wasn't always with Emily and we were at all the holidays together. It was a brilliant thing, but we did make the mistake of not talking when we should have been talking and kind of putting it aside. Right. And, and so this conversation is so helpful. I feel like to Logan, who's about to marry my daughter and who my daughter came up in that situation, right? So to know that, to have the have conversations, don't don't second guess it. Don't say we can get to it later. It's so important to not do that, right? Yeah, you don't you don't want to back burner it. And it is we work for our relationship. Like we probably, honestly, if if that everything didn't happen with the pandemic, we probably might have even gone to couples counseling because we did not we didn't necessarily have the tools to understand what was happening. Mm. We didn't understand because no one was really doing something wrong. Exactly. No, you know, there was no we weren't fighting, but there came a point where we very holding for where we very honestly said to each other like we don't like each other very much. You know, it's like you can love the person and you can be on, but there are just times when you just don't like each other very much. And yeah. mm-hmm. that is one thing we've always been pretty honest about. Like when you're just not at your best and you're just driving the other person up the wall. Yeah. And, you know, because it's not just that you're having a kid, there's life happening, parents getting sick, friends getting sick, friends trying to get pregnant friends not getting pregnant friends that had it super easy like there's this chaos that you know you're not in this insular vacuum where it's just us there's stuff that's going on in his life that he's dealing with and suppressing because he's like oh she can't she's already busy with that and then stuff that I'm like oh that's just you know girl stuff I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna put that on him it's but I remember very clearly like a year ago sitting there like just getting teary and I'm like feel not in especially in an industry that thrives on your physicality i'm like mm. just don't feel sexy and i feel like i'm letting you down and i don't know if it's that my hormones are off and i think that they are and even being able to say that and i just i just lay there and just was like bawling like a baby i'm like i just don't feel cute but yeah. he gives me room to feel safe to say that too you know and I, that i don't that don't have to go in the bathroom and just feel insecure and but because there is that stigma in the business of bouncing back and we all see it and everyone like, no, you know, that's not the expectation. Yes, it is. If that is the role that you've come up in, in the business, they're not trying to all of a sudden have you shift and change. No. There's still there's an idea of who you are. Um, so, you know, I was out there at six weeks back in the skinny jeans and, Luckily, I'd been working out the entire time just because that's who I am anyway. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have the stress of going to set thing like, oh, I'm not going to fit or what is somebody going to say? But those are all things that weigh on you when you're like in an industry that judges you physically mm-hmm. and, you, and you bring that home. Yeah, most definitely. It's It's something that I feel like, you know, that. It, the good communication to have with one another, I feel like is very important. I go through that now, even with, you know, we get stuck in our own lives. We're all trying to pursue our own career paths, her trying to use her bachelor's degree to finally get into a career path because it is a very challenging market to get into that place. And then I'm trying to do everything on the entertainment side. So just to have that conversation back and forth, I feel like is very important. And thank you for justifying that the, the process that I have in my brain, um, something else <laughs> I wanted to touch back a little bit on too, because you brought up role models, um, when you were growing up and when I was growing up, you know, my, my, mom would go through different boyfriends or whether it be my dad when I was really younger. And it would be kind of like a a situation where if they were mad at each other, they would get in big blow up arguments in front of me. How do you guys approach arguments or disagreements when it comes to parenting? Do you wait to have that conversation behind closed doors? Are you okay with having the conversation in front of him or how does that happen? Uh, 
But sometimes it pops off. We try, obviously, not to do that in front of him because mm-hmm. I grew up in the same situation you're describing. And I always told myself I don't want to be that kind of parent to right. try, try to change the cycle of it. But sometimes you're just so heated that it doesn't even matter that you're just... I don't think... But I, we don't. We haven't had a fight in front of... You no, know, mm-hmm. we've, had, we've had a heated argument. And it's usually at the point where I will... Where we come at each other and I'm like... Well, I am not going to let my son think that the way that we speak to each other is in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, we we have very different temperaments. Mm-hmm. I usually try to diffuse and, you know, try to get under and reason it out. I'm like, the, the, there's a solution here. But then sometimes we have to go head to head. And if Noah's nearby, we'll take like it will. He's never heard a screaming match. That's mm-hmm. not going to be his life, but also because there's no reason for us to be screaming at each other and disrespecting each other. Right. Then we let something escalate, and then there's a bigger issue at hand. Um, absolutely have fights. We just have different fighting techniques. If we were both people that blew up, it would be we'd go scorched earth. But luckily, and even... It seems that like there's always one person that's managing to kind of take the high road when we're mm-hmm. going. Like, it's very rare that we both just laugh. Right. Well, so, and what Logan said, too, about not just on the everyday fights of things that you might be going on or causing or whatever. They're, with the planning and knowing it was coming and the whole process of you guys getting pregnant and having the birth, did you still find that you ran into maybe some different parenting styles, some stuff that you guys didn't agree on that you didn't realize that you didn't agree on going into it? No, not really. I mean, I'd love to say like, oh, this was weird, but we were so on the same page. Again, because we had struggled for so long. Right. We were such a team in it. Like, most it's real it's funny because a lot of couples struggle through the i like through the ivs stuff and everything Mm -hmm. like once it was locked into oh this is actually a problem and he knew that i was already carrying a tremendous amount of guilt because it was my body that was having the issues Mm. and you know that there's that thing too society is very comfortable with coming up to a woman being like when you having kids when you getting on and when you're going to do that and, and, and even before we went through what we were going through, it was never, it never occurred to me to ask another woman because you don't know what people, what's happened. You don't know if it's her, you don't know if it's a partner. You just, it's none of my business. Right. But we're very comfortable putting women in that position and you smile it off and you laugh it off and you, you know, make a joke, but it starts to weigh on you. It does. The, the struggles before getting pregnant with how I felt about myself, not being able to do something what that everybody else can so easily do, the amount of money that it was causing, there was a tremendous amount of guilt around that. And so by the time we got pregnant, like people were always like, wasn't it the most magical? It took a while for me to feel the magic because I was so like, everything's got to work out. Like so much has happened. and. Is it healthy? Is it healthy? Yeah. Healthy yeah. It? And the that, guilt factor, if it doesn't work out, right? Like, what if we spend all this money? What if we do all this stuff and it doesn't work out? What did we do? Work, we'll, it didn't work out a couple, quite a few times. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, and you don't, and you're not supposed to talk about how many times it didn't work out. Right. If right. There's a stigma like, oh, we did it. And everybody's couches is and yeah. like, oh, yeah, we tried. And it's, it's like, most people go multiple rounds, multiple rounds of music, yeah. and and that takes takes a toll every single time. Where you get to the point, you're like, do we do we even continue? So that's I think why by the time we did get pregnant with Noah, we were in such the team. We knew the type of parents we wanted to be. We were so grateful that we were going to be the parents to this little soul that had picked us. That we we knew that we, this journey was going to be special. We wanted it to change us. We weren't like, oh, we got something to get back to. We're like, this next thing, everything is us plus one. You know what? I I love that you that you brought that up about the stigma because 
this is a mental health podcast and I feel like the root of all mental health problems is the societal expectations that are put on to people that lead to those mental health problems. Mm-hmm. You should you should be married by this age, have a house by this age and a kid by this age. You should be making this much money by this age and set for retirement or you should there are so many expectations put mm-hmm. on to people that you feel like you're failing if you're not matching it. And if your friends, oh, um, God forbid, hit those goals at those times, then you feel even more like, oh my gosh, well, everybody around me is doing it. Why am I not doing it, right? And then you force yourself, I feel like, sometimes into those situations. And 10, de- 10 years down the line, it's not even what you wanted. And you're miserable and you're taking it out on the other person. It's because, you know, so I'm glad that you brought that up because I really do in my heart, and Logan and I talk about this all the time, feel that the majority, the vast majority of mental instability is because of societal expectations and what we think is supposed to happen instead of doing what we know should happen for ourselves right and and, and i'm glad that you guys brought that up yeah because there is that thing of pressure of it all the pressure and this idea that we have a society that likes to treat you like where you're at is never good enough like oh what's next oh you're this Oh, in relationships. Oh, you got a boyfriend, you're getting engaged, you're gonna get married, you're gonna have kids. Oh, you're doing that. Oh, you booked that. Oh, what's next? It's the subliminal message is that where you're at is not good enough. Mm -hmm. Like on the measuring stick, you have to be moving ahead. And I will not have that at home. I will not do that to my child. I won't even tell him that I'm proud of him. I ask him if he's proud of himself. I don't want him to be a people pleaser. I don't want him to need to feel my validation to know that he's done well. Mm. That one thing, because I am in a 12 step program for people pleasing. I am the daughter of an immigrant. Like we are conditioned to, you know, troubleshoot, fix it, everything, put yourself last on the list. And it has taken many years for me to go, oh, but I am not happy doing that. It doesn't actually, I thought it was like, oh, everybody does, I'm so reliable. I'm like, no, this doesn't feel good because it's most often not reciprocated. But there's this idea of what good girls do, what good women do, what good daughters do, what good sisters do, what a good wife does. And I I was taught I had to check those boxes. Right. Mm. Mm. And a lot of women are, to, and then if one of your boxes is going unchecked, you must be failing. When are you going to get that? When are you going to get that check mark? Yeah, and then you the 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 tendency to spill that over to the parenting and into the child's life, mm-hmm. right? And you yeah. unintentionally putting those same expectations on the child, and and so to recognize it and not do it, good job. Good job. And and to have these conversations because I feel like the, the best of parents make mistakes and, and, and it's okay to make mistakes. Like you said at the very beginning of this, it doesn't come with a handbook. <laughs> Keep them alive. Do the best that you can. You're going to and, make uh, and mistakes. Apologize, like, and I apologize. Like if I make a mistake with something, I apologize to him. I yeah. apologize so that he knows that what he's feeling is valid and that he recognize that he learns to recognize what that feeling is mm. because we have we come from the generation of overbearing parents are either not there at all cuz you're allowed to, or there you're under their thumb and that that was not the kind of parent I wanted to be and we were on the same page as that like and it's hard because we have a child that actually tests gifted and we have to back off of that and not push it and you know, he's already the youngest in his class and recognize like, ooh, let's, this is his journey. We are just the guides. We are the guides he is not. I heard once this beautiful quote that he is from me, not of me. Like mm. he's not mine. He just came to, he's his own person. Yeah. He's, you know, he doesn't belong to us. We're, we're just the chosen guides for that for his path and the the crap that we maybe haven't worked out 
in our own with our own selves and our own growth he's that's not that's not the place to work it out on him like we're supposed to fix that before it even gets to him and i think as a parent that part i really admire again watching ryan with him watching ryan's dad with ryan now how their relationship has shifted watching the three of them together it's fatherhood has changed it's redefined them and it's beautiful because Noah is getting to see what that looks like. A father who loves his son, um, the generation of that. And, and that I think is also missing from a whole generation of kids that have just grown up with one parent here, one parent there. It does make a difference. I can see when he pushes, when it's like, oh, this is, this is, this is a dad moment. This is a little right. boy need, right. be, you know, a little cub needs to be kind of corralled. Uh, well, and, and, oh my God, you, you know, it's, it's a dad who loves his son. You can see that. It's also a dad who loves mom. And that being viewed by Noah is he's learning how to be that dad, to be that husband. This is how you treat people. This is how you do it, right? And yet still allowing him to control his own journey and to learn and make mistakes and acknowledging mistakes and saying that that's okay too. You don't have to be perfect. We're not going to fix our fucked up childhoods through your childhood. It's okay to do this or that. So I love that. And I got to be honest with you. Anybody who doesn't follow y'all, you need to follow. I look forward to Sunday. Like, I, I, I can't wait to see what the adventure is going to be. Yeah. Those posts are phenomenal. You know, it was one of the greatest things of my life growing up, having those moments with my daughter and having those special days with my, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And I love that you post it. And I love that it's Sunday. Trust me, guys, follow Ryan and look that it's, it's phenomenal. And I, I hope you continue to keep doing that. Well, when he doesn't want to spend time with you, you know? exactly. it's like, dad, I got a date. I don't want to. It's Sunday. Right. But you know, but, uh, <laughs> but I love that. Kudos to that. Kudos. I, I, I just love it. But you know, it's that, it's that thing. Like I would, cause, cause I listen to you and I follow you and, um, and I screenshot some of the, like some of the messages that you put out there and it means, and you know, I, uh, because I didn't even realize when the first time we met and then I'm like, oh, we are tribe. Yes. <laughs> spirits. Like, and I'm like, you get sent people that somehow make all of this easier but like this journey this people that you admire and i loved your messaging because i do believe though i do have the same kind of blueprint in life that you did and in how you want to approach the business and how you want to approach people and how you want people to feel and i think that carries over to to i'm sure your daughter has that and I want him to have that. I We're at a time right now, and I think you, you feel the rage out there. You feel the people's impotent anger where they people just want to be seen, they want to be heard, they want to be acknowledged. And mental illness is the crisis that we're in in this country right now. And you can see how people fall through the cracks mm -hmm. and you can see how people didn't get the help how a child doesn't get the help, how the difficult child gets labeled. You see how it starts at five where certain kids are being called problematic or because we just don't want to stop and, and take stock of where we're at. That, you know, that act of, oh, don't fix it if it's not broken. No, fix it before it's broken. I heard that the other day and I thought that was so amazing. Yes, fix the problem before it's broken. Yeah. And sometimes fixing the problem is as simple as seeing somebody, acknowledging somebody, right? And and that's what I try to do with those posts. And I almost cried. Thank you so much for all that. We are tribe, and I really appreciate those kind words. It it's it's important to me. Sometimes if I'm having a bad day, I'll just put out a positive message because I feel like somebody else is having the same bad day, and they need to know that I see that and that they're not alone. And if I can say something positive just to make them smile today. That's worth it to me. That's that's how you should do it. And <laughs> especially when you got smiles like that. Like, come on now. <laughs> yeah, and 
also this thing that we're we fear being labeled as sad like happy and sad exist together just mm -hmm. because we're we're afraid of saying we're we're angry or hurt or depressed but those are completely normal emotions they're part of our spectrum yeah <laughs> you can be a happy person and be sad i was always taught you can't be both mm -hmm. that you know even the two masks in theater like i've always thought that's not actually correct they should be overlaying each other mm. because they're not separate and we're being told that if you're funny, you can only be funny. If you're sad, you're sad. If you're having this emotion, that that is the whole definition of you. They should be on top of each other and displaying both sides, not separate, because they're not separate. They're not. Yeah. Mm. And, yeah something. You know, I, I, and I've told you, like, watching what, um, it's not a secret, um, my sister, my younger sister is bipolar, and watching the lack of resources available even to people that have the means to find the resources and pay for those resources. You know, the, the country's in a crisis. It's in a crisis for teenagers. It's in a crisis for mothers. It's in a crisis for fathers because the fact that we're, that a father can't go change his child, that there's no changing tables in bathrooms for men. Accurate. That, you know, they're, they're finally getting, you know, family rooms, but, I love oh. you. Thank you for the, thank you for, there's a dinosaur in my ear. <laughs> he's like, he's like, let's keep it light, people. That's right. Right. He's like, mom, this is getting real deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's the part that we don't talk about. The fact mm -hmm. that there are places where people just can't get help. Right. Um, your your mom, okay, if you can afford to go get therapy, great. But for what about for the mom where the choice is therapy or paying for diapers? What mm. about the fact that, oh, can you buy milk or put a gallon of gas in your car? Mm. Yeah. The resources are not there. Um, more and more group um, settings for people to get group therapy are shutting down. Um, the The way that medications are pushed Everybody has a different doctor for a different thing. It's, and people think like, oh, how is this going to tie into parent to like parenthood and a child? Well, I'm watching the child that I'm watching the world that I'm trying to prepare him for. Exactly. And I'm watching it shift. And if he needs help, God forbid, at some point, I would want to be able to find that. And those are the things as a mother that. <laughs> Oh my God, what? I don't know if you hear a birthday card in the back. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, can you get a release? Can you guys get a release for the song? No. <laughs> it's good. I think we get a certain amount of time for it, right? We're good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's kind of that, those things where, you know, you, I, we, we talk about things like that just weren't discussed with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That being sad, parents. You know, I, I think I saw my mom cry three times yeah. in her life and that we're not taught that the normalcy of your emotions. And as you said, not being able to express that. Right. That is not a legacy that I want to pass on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. And something that I'm very curious about, because my father came from the generation of you know, be a man, man up. So of course, you know, that's kind of generational trauma where it gets passed down to me. Um, so Ryan, I'm curious to like, how do you approach your son when he's having a bad day, when he's going through something? How do you give him the necessary tools to, you know, be able to feel the feelings, but then mm -hmm. also being able to continue moving forward? I'm always very curious about everybody's yeah. approaches. <laughs> Luckily, his father's an actor, so he loves dealing with his emotions. <laughs> so we encourage every feeling, like, and we try to label, like, or try to have him feel like, what is this you're feeling? Mm -hmm. Are you angry? Are you sad? You're just sad. It's okay. You can be sad. He gets very emotional sometimes when he watches stuff, sad mm -hmm. for animals, if he sees a dead animal or something on the street. So we allow, I allow him to express that which i was not allowed to when i was grew up in sports and everything right yep that was never an option for me 
but I definitely feel like it's a great tool for him to start feeling these emotions and able to express them is going to be very powerful him as he grows up. So I am all for him expressing that. Well, kudos to you and to Logan because it's, it is, we all come from that generation. Like where you said, if we played sports, I played every sport and God forbid, if you were having a bad day, you, who gives a shit, you're going to suit up and you're going to go and you're going to be a man. Like Logan said, there wasn't okay crying. You had to man up. You, you, men don't cry. You put that aside, you know? So to overcome that and be able to express yourself and have those emotions and then move that forward and to be able to do that for your child, congratulations, because it, it's not always easy to do. You are a product of how you are raised and how you have the environment that you were in. So to be able to acknowledge that that's not right and to be able to overcome that, that's a huge mm. deal. So congrats to both of you for being able to do that. He and, worked, but it didn't come easy to him. Like he worked on that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, you know, his a avatar is a clamshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that, so he really, that like for his crap and for himself, like that was something that he worked on. Like to really, that that, for that not to be his default. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that was his entire adult life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so when, when you sit watching him cry when Noah was born, like seeing him there, like he got to hold his hand first. It's like that, those things is because he is open. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? And it, I, it's the reason that Logan came to me and wanted to do this podcast. Because for two things that we have just talked about over the last 20 minutes or so, to to have a safe place for people to come and be themselves and to know that it's okay to be open, especially for men. We've been hearing it a lot over these first several episodes that it's nice to see men cry or to open up and be emotional and talk about things that you don't associate men talking about, right? And the other thing is to have a place as a resource because like what you were saying – not everybody can afford to go to therapy. Not everybody can afford to, to, to find outreach to how do I deal with this problem? Is there an avenue for me to get help? Does somebody understand what I'm going through? So the other aspect of starting this is to have these conversations, to put it out there in a safe place to let somebody know you are not alone and you may not have the resources, but you are seen. And if we can help you, if we can just by having this conversation make you feel better, may, may help you get where the direction you need to go. It's If we can do that for one person, it's completely mm. worth it. So, you, you know, and you guys coming on and sharing your stories like that and addressing the fact that you understand that not everybody has the same access and not everybody can do this and the importance of making it a better world, making it a better place for our children and their children. And, and it's so critically important and it takes people like you guys to come on and be brave enough to have these conversations. So we we cannot thank you guys enough for doing that. And and Logan, what a what a benefit today as a young man getting ready to get into a marriage and and to become an eventual parent to have this. I had nothing like this. I had no idea. It was like no holy man. yeah. So to have an open conversation and go, here's everything we didn't know. Here's everything we fucked up at. Here's everything we had to work at. What a resource. What an unbelievable resource to just have that conversation. And I love that you guys are so open up because I feel like we live in a world of social media where everything looks perfect. And you guys mm -hmm. are the most adorable couple. And, you, and, 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 and just to come on here and open up and go, we work every day at our relationship. We work mm -hmm. every day at our parenting. We work. There's, a, there's an image, but we work at that image. And that is the realist that we need. Because life is not perfect. Our journey is not. We are always learning. We are always growing. And I like the one thing, I just want to wrap this up by saying that when you said that you apologize to your son when you do something wrong so that he can get that feeling, that acknowledgement, that is so critically important because you cannot succeed in life without understanding failure. 
It's okay to fail. It's okay to make a mistake. That's how we learn and grow. So to acknowledge that and teach him that early that it's okay to not be okay, that's so critically important. And you guys are doing a phenomenal job. I can't tell that that kid's happy at all. A <laughs> <laughs> little, little too. Yeah. I, I, first of all, really appreciate you asking us to come on because – it causes me also, as I'm saying things, to remember that I do have to respect and love my husband and make sure that in all of the craziness, because, you know, the this industry feeds the ego and mm. it wants to nurture narcissism. And, and I always say to him, like, I want to work from joy, not from chaos. Like, it's, I've been taught that success comes from chaos and stirring the pot. And I'm like, but that's not what, that is not what I want. I want to work from a joyful place, um, a, a team. Like a, that, that us being a team is the most important thing in, in this journey together because that I didn't see us growing up. My friends didn't have two parents. I didn't have it. Uh, you know, maybe one, she had maybe one other relationship, some uncles, but I didn't see, like, I wasn't trying to emulate anything. I watched Disney films. I, you know, I wanted the prince. Okay, I got the prince, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, so there's a lot of trial and error of going like, oh, I have to be really honest with, the things that with the messy of me to actually have the life I want where I was taught that my messy is undesirable and, you know, keep those parts of yourself hidden. And I remember I came, I, we were struggling to get pregnant and I like, and it was towards the time where we almost decided that maybe that's time to call it. And I, and I had read a book, I think it was like a Jodi Bacall book, where she had said, said, like, don't forget your partner in it. And I said, wow, the whole reason I want to have a child is because I have such a great partner. And I, I, this love that I have with him, I, I want to share that with this child to come from that love. But even if that's not the way parenthood is supposed to go for me, even, wow, what a great love I have. And I made peace with that. And I made peace with my mom and all the things I started talking about, my sister's illness and everything. I stopped being afraid that showing the things in me that I thought were quote unquote not perfect would cause me to lose or be seen in a way that I thought was less than. And it was when I got the most honest when I got pregnant. Yeah. Amazing how that works, right? Amazing how mm -hmm. that works. Just miraculous. It, it, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And can I just say to, to like towards the end of this thing, it's also very important, I think, for everybody out there to know that it is a journey. And newsflash, the person that you are at the beginning of the journey is not the person you are during the journey or after the journey. And to have a partner and people in your circle that understand that you are going to change during the journey, you are going to be many different people along the journey, finding your way to where you're supposed to be, the acknowledgement of that and the knowing that that's okay and being there for each other, no matter what, that's so critically important. Because I feel like that, a lot of people will be like, you're not even the same person, and they walk away. It's okay to not be the same person. Of course not. You're growing. You're learning. You're on this journey. It's life. You're not going to be the same person, and that's totally okay. And to find your person that understands that is so critically important. And I feel like you guys have done that, and, and you guys are sharing that, and, and it's a beautiful thing. Well, thank you for having us. Of yeah. course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is um, when I'm going through that first year of parenthood, I'm just going to be repeating this episode. Just listen to it non freaking stop. <laughs> Remember, the only thing, just keep them alive. Keep them alive. <laughs> yes, just keep them alive. <laughs> and the diaper's dry. This, this amazing thing, there's a little blue stripe on the diaper, lets you know if it's wet. 
magical. <laughs> Instead of cigars, they literally should hand out those T-shirts. Keep them alive. That's all you need, yeah. right there. Hand that out at the at the birth all the time. Oh my gosh! Cool, like the little swaddle blankets, just having a cross there. That's like, right. Keep them alive. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! Fantastic. Well, listen, guys. Thank you so much for coming on again. You guys are amazing. Um, just anytime you ever want to come back on either podcast when all these strikes are over, or want to come back on if you have something weighing on your mind, we are down for a free therapy session just to get it all out there we are all about that um but yeah keep in touch and we'll be talking to you guys soon thank you guys congratulations again thank you appreciate it appreciate it have a good night have a good night guys thanks for having us all right oh man like i said i mean just a non-stop one shop stop top non-stop one-stop shop of parenting right there yeah yeah you know my favorite part throughout the whole conversation was the realism of there's no such thing as a perfect relationship there's no such Mm -hmm. thing as a perfect marriage there's no such thing as perfect parents it's work you have to work at it every day it's a journey it's a process you're gonna make mistakes and it's all okay because Mm -hmm. if you just look at them they look picture perfect so for them to come on and say no 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 guys anything but this is what we do it's so critically important to have those conversations and let people know that it's okay you're gonna fuck up and it's all good like like ella said at the top there is no manual Mm -mm. you're just gonna you're gonna fly and you're gonna go with it no matter what you do so oh yeah what a fun conversation yeah it was so good it was so good and they're a strong testament to show you no matter the road no matter the journey no matter the speed bumps that everything is okay (laughs) 